Hello friends, this is Growl. In this video, I'm going to be going over the five things that you need to do on the week that patch 9.1 drops for Shadowlands. As a little bit of a spoiler warning, I'm going to be showing some footage from PTR in this video, so if you really don't want to get spoiled, well, maybe just close your eyes or something. So it's important to know that there's not a whole lot of time pressure on the things that you're doing right now. Most of the stuff that we're doing now is just setting ourselves up so that we're, you know, getting into the grind of the things that we'll need to improve our power level in the late game. So don't feel bad if you miss out on any one of these individual things or if you're busy, you know, it may seem overwhelming if there's a lot of different things, but really it's actually pretty simple and pretty run of the mill and none of it is individually super important. So before I go into my list, I want to talk about two of the new resources going into the next patch. They are Soul Cinders and Stygian Embers. Soul Cinders are the new Soul Ash that are used to upgrade your legendary items to rank 5 and rank 6 in this new patch. You get these Soul Cinders from similar situations that you'd get Soul Ash from, doing the new layers of Torghast, as well as some other small sources like weekly or bi-weekly quests, and maybe even the mission table or other things like that down the line. Stygian Embers are used to upgrades, upgrade your Shards of Domination. These are runes, essentially, that you put in sockets and gear. If you're not familiar with what these are, I would definitely recommend check out my video on Shards of Domination as well. So now that you understand these two things, let's go into the five things that you need to be doing on the first week. So the first and most important is to get through the campaigns and the quests. There are a few different things that we need to worry about. The first one is the Corthia campaign. This is going to unlock the new area in the Maw. This is where you'll be doing your dailies, where you'll be doing your questing and stuff like that. And eventually you'll go further and further as the storyline goes on, but you're only going to be doing the early chapters right now. The next quest that you may need to be doing, I'm not sure if they're going to be released, are the Covenant Campaign Quests. And this is because those campaign quests give you renown. Now, if you have not completed your Covenant Campaign Quests from 9.0, you will also need to do those before you can continue on to the next Covenant Campaign Quest. So if you just ended up switching or you were just lazy and you didn't do those, you will want to do those. The main reason is that you need to reach 48 Renown to craft your Covenant-specific Legendary. I know a lot of people are excited in making that and trying that out, and if you're on pace with your Renown, you'll hit rank 48 just as you get enough Soul Cinders to be able to make a rank 5 Lego. So if you're not caught up to Renown, although it's not a huge power level loss, you will not be able to make that Covenant-specific Lego when that happens. So then once you have your Corthia campaign done and your Covenant campaign done, then we just have our dailies and bi-weeklies. These are done in Corthia. These are less important. The weeklies and bi-weeklies, like the assault and the weekly quest, are more important. The dailies aren't so important, mainly just to build up reputation. Reputation with the new area, I think for Horde, it's called... Um, death's advance i don't know if it's the same for alliance but it's essentially just allowing you to get some of the similar things that you expect from end game buying sockets and upgrading conduits and stuff like that so number two is to do torghast now torghast has changed quite a bit from 9.0 it has now a new rating system on your run what that means is you're not necessarily just going to skip all the way to the end and do it. You're more encouraged to clear out a lot of the stuff on the floors. Now, in order to unlock the next floor, you're going to need to get at least four stars rated. However, if you get five star rating, you will unlock the bonus floor at the end of that run. Now, it's been changing quite a bit, and I'm not so sure everything that's going to be included in the bonus floor, but in the first few weeks, while you're ranking up your Torghast from layer 9 all the way to layer 12, you may as well get the 5 star anyway and get the bonus floor because you have to do 4 stars anyway, so you may as well just try and full clear it and check it out. I'll leave a little image on screen here that shows some of the like bonuses. Time isn't a big issue here with Torghast. It's not a matter of speed running it it's more about doing all the things on the floor killing all the mobs breaking all the urns getting all the souls etc 
And remember, the reason that we're doing these Torghast early on, not just unlocking the higher ones, but also to earn Soul Cinders, because we want to be able to make our Legendary as early as possible, which is likely going to be rank three, or uh, sorry, rank three, week three of the patch when Mythic Raid drops. The third thing that we want to do is plan our Mythic Plus situation. So it's still technically the first season, you know, nothing's really changed. You're not going to be able to get new patch gear yet. However, one thing that you may want to do is try and do a high-ish key so that next week, the week that we do want to do our weekly 15, we get one out of our weekly chest. This isn't super important. You know, it'll be much easier to push a key up than it was in the first week of Mythic Plus on in the expansion. However, if you're, let's say you're managing a lot of characters or maybe time is a constraint, you may want to do a high key on the first week in order to get a 15 or close to a 15 the next week. Generally, from my experience, they derank keys about four levels or so. So I think a 19 or maybe even a 20 would be safe. Keep in mind, 20s are pretty dang hard, so don't have this expectation that you have to do a 20 this week. Feel free to do just as high as you're comfortable with. That way you have to spend less time pushing up a key on week two. However, pushing up a key on week two is going to be fun and you're going to be getting new gear and lots of people are going to be playing. So don't stress out if you aren't able to get this uh, job done. Now, if you haven't played your character in a while on the first week you can actually get a new key from a vendor in Orbos. it'll be by the weekly vault and you can simply say hey give me a key normally you'd have to go run a dungeon and get the key from out of the out of the the chest or whatever but you can actually just talk to this guy and get your key if you uh you know you need a key and you're going to start pushing it up there so number four, while we're at that vendor, is spend all of our resources that are going away in Season 2. So the three resources I'm talking about are Valor, Conquest, and Honor. I know for certain that Valor and Conquest are being reset. However, I'm not sure about Honor. I would imagine so. Now, you can't really get too much with these. However, it's important that you just spend them because why not? It's free. So for Valor, what I've been doing is I've been buying heavy callous hides. This is, at least on my server, the most efficient way to uh, spend my Valor into a resource that I can sell for gold and then use for next patch. For Conquest, you can only really buy transmogs. If you somehow have Conquest left over, maybe look through the vendor and see if there's any transmogs you need. And with Honor, you can also buy transmogs. You can also buy just plain out Marks of Honor, and you can use those to buy transmogs from previous expansions as well. And the fifth and last thing that I'm going to talk about are build up some of the old patch resources that we may need for the new patch, specifically Soul Ash and Stygia. You really won't need a whole lot of soul ash keep in mind that we're going to be running tour gas to get soul cinders anyway and you're also going to be getting a lot of soul ash per run so if you don't need soul ash if you know that your legendary situation is all set or if you have some banked up don't even worry about farming soul ash however keep in mind that in 9.1 you can actually repeatedly run tour gas to get more soul ash now if it, you know it's mainly for if let's say you're close you need to you know maybe do one more run to get enough soul ash don't forget that you can run torghast again to get more soul ash however that does not apply with soul cinders stygia is a resource that you're not going to be able to do a whole lot with however you do want a little bit banked up the most important amount is 2500 and that's because you can buy an item that allows you to take the shards out of the sockets of your items and move them around this is going to be mandatory for gearing you're going to of course want to move these unique equipped gems around as you upgrade your gear so you're going to need at least 2500 stygia if you don't have that banked up maybe spend a little bit of time in the maw and grab that on the first week and if you want to spend a little bit of more time or maybe you're close to this you can also buy a uh, socketed uh do sorry a domination socketed item from the vendor and you may need this if you want to finish out a set bonus or you just collect the transmog or whatever this is going to cost you another 2000 so at a bare minimum you're going to want 2500 stygia and if if possible you want 4500 to buy this item and that's it 
those are the five things that you need to do on first week of patch 9.1 so really quickly let's go over some of the things that i didn't mention just to be sure that you know these are things that are not in the game number one is the new dungeon i know a lot of people are excited to do the mega dungeon and farm it it's not going to be in the game until week two so for sure week two as soon as that's open jump in with your guild or your group to to farm it up do it on the hard mode grab that necklace but for now you don't need to worry about it again no raid as well there's not going to be any raid the week two is when the normal and heroic raid drops and then week three is when the mythic raid drops so you don't have to worry about raid and the last one is the new mythic plus season right there's no seasonal affix and you know we're still we're still basically on prideful now keep in mind i mentioned the you know trying to get a high key out of your weekly chest but your weekly vault doesn't necessarily matter that much your weekly vault reward on week two that you got from week one is still going to be from season one you're not going to get a 253 item or whatever out of your weekly chest so don't the only reason you would need to do a weekly key is to get a high key for the next week so that sums up any everything that I had to say. If you guys have any questions or suggestions for other people to do this week, feel free to drop them in the comments and happy uh, questing, I guess.